Well, thank you for everybody that prayed for me and for the mission. I give all the glory to God and the praises to the King. It was successful more than I have prayed for and more than I have expected. Ukraine is a beautiful country, unique, with loving people, hungry for God. I call them crazy cuckoo people for God. And I love that when I say, oh, I don't know what's, what's up with you cuckoo people. Just crazy for God. Now they call each other cuckoo crazy. <laughs> well, anyways, I, I, you can put, put I'll bas- bypass some of them. Um, you, that's the flag of Ukraine. And um, I asked, I contended for the Lord a year right out after I arrived last year because I just have that feeling and that, that hunger to go back but I have to ask him for, for the go signal. Next, please. These are the things that the Lord had spoken to me before going there. It's the eagle, the eye of the eagle. And I said, Lord, I just want that. Next, please. Even on the plane, I said, what are you going to do with all the prophetic words that has been released a year ago? And he said, acceleration. And even when I was there, words that has been released in a matter of a day and t- or two, there's testimony already. That's how powerful he did Ukraine this year. Next, please. I love, I love clouds. Next, please. That's what you can see in Ukraine. Next, please. First day, I mean... I got there Friday and Sunday. I didn't realize I was assigned already to preach in four churches. And I had jet lag. And first one is like, oh, it's easy, Lord. The village, good 20, 30, all babushkas, grandmas. But the second one, I didn't know the Lord was about to show off. And I even said, I surrender everything to you, including my mouth, because sometimes my mouth is untamable. So I said, I was doing the preaching. I said, Lord, on the way, it's like a, an hour travel. And I said, Lord, I don't know what, what word will I give. And so I started, he said, intentionality. I said, okay. So I was pre- preaching back and forth, back and forth, and I heard the Lord said, see that lady there? I said, yes, Lord, prophesy. I said, Lord, I'm speaking. You know, can't, can't this wait a little later? You know, after I had said, I'm surrounding my mouth and everything. So I went to that lady's hand. I went to her. And I said, I don't know what's up with you, madam. I said, but I hear the Lord saying, and the Lord got quiet. I said, Lord. Everybody's eyes are on me right now. They're going to kill me, you know. But I said, and then I said again, I heard the Lord saying, and it came out. All the Lord said, you've been waiting for a big gift. Receive it. Take it home. It's yours. And everybody's eyes were on me. And the lady was crying. So I didn't know the history. The following day, we were doing a home visit. She's the very first one. I said, Lord have mercy. Uh, She's going to ask me about the prophecy, Lord. You know, and and then that's when I found out she's a solid orthodox. Never been to a Christian church. Never been prophesied on. Never knew about Jesus. More on Mary. And you can see in her house a lot of artifacts for Orthodox. So I, I learned that day that she's got five types of cancer on, in five different places in her body. Three deadly, two curable. They basically gave up on her. But I said, no. I said, you showed off yesterday. You better show off again, Lord. So I, I led her to a 
salvation prayer and taught her how to cancel, to bind, to release. And she said, I have a check tomorrow. I said, it's canceled already. Don't claim it back. She was crying. The third day, we're doing all cell groups. And she's there again. I said, Lord, it's either you have mercy on her or mercy on me. <laughs> because we're running out of prayers here. And then she, she's like, they can't say my name correctly. And she said, oh, Lenya, Lenya, Lenya. I said, Lord, I'm dead, you know. And she's all kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy. And then she, tell, she told me crying. The doctors were amazed and went crazy because they couldn't find anything. Yeah. And um, she said, but they're going to send all my, my specimens and my results to Kiel and Germany. I said, forget about Kiel. For, forget about, you know, Germany. It's already done. I said, take it. So Saturday, she got the confirmation. She, she uh, testified that Sunday I was in another church that it was all wiped out, confirmed. This is the, some of the churches I went through from village to village. Next, please. That's when we were praying. That's the pastor right there, the tall one. Next, please. And this is the home visits. Really um, amazing stories. Some of them finding their husbands in the cemetery. That's, the, that's how they met their husbands. I said, how? Because they party in the cemetery. They have this tradition talking to the dead. I said, no, they're already dead. They can't speak back to you. And she convert, I mean, she, she professed and received Christ that day so that's i always say i'm going fishing every day with the lord and that family there i have an instant boyfriend that little kid she he was just all over me and he, the mother said he has he has not seen anybody with so dark hair and so short you're the first one i said wow i'm in love i said next please next please this is the cell group. They always have food. And they're so, the, the old babushkas, I call them, they're so devoted and so hungry. They're, they go wild. They really go wild. I've never seen old people go wild like Ukrainians, truly. Next, please. This is the youth. They're wilder. They are wilder. And they would just, they can scare a cat just by proclamation. Seriously. Um, next, please. Even in the bus stop, the Lord won't stop us. We're catching our fish every day. These are the old babushkas we have. We're waiting for a bus that day, cold, and they're walking with canes and stuff. I call. This lady here on the left, I call her the Moses of Ukraine. Beautiful voice, and she's got that staff. Amazing. Orthodox. Received Christ that Sunday. Next, please. This is another region I went to. Cherkasy, where they have a great body of water. And they've been having complaints about it. And I, I taught them how to release the blessing over the water and cleanse it. Next, please. There were sightings of angels in the church that day. And few people saw it. So that's a blessing and wonders that even though there, some of them are still orthodox, signs and wonders confirms it, that there's a Lord. Next, please. They go crazy there. If, if I could have just recorded it, I go nuts. It's like I can't handle it sometimes because the, the proclamation they do, really on fire. 
and, and it's so good. Revival is everywhere. Next, please. This is what I call a party by the river. <laughs> they had a service. It's a small church in the village, like 15, 20 again. And they're so happy to hear about Jesus. And out of that, their gratitude, fish are expensive in Ukraine. They cook. And you can see how tiny the meat is remaining on the bone. But they still are so giving. Everything they could give, that's Jesus in them. And I, while that was going on, I told them the story of uh, Esau and Jacob. For a bowl of food, do not sell your right. Next, please. This is another one. They're into food. If you go there and don't gain weight, there's prob you have some problem. They, they planned a picnic service by Nipropetros River. So, next please. These are the pastor's prophetics and healing room. Sue, so that's, that's Ima, Ira and uh, Dima. Next, please. This is where the Lord had opened up to the government. I got one afternoon, they, I, I should be resting, but they, they called me up and say, hey, what are you doing? They are a little sneaky. And they said, oh, you're, you're cool? Uh, can, can we come and pick you up? In five minutes, we're there. They're just downstairs. <laughs> but this is... Um, this is the chief architect of the capital of Ukraine. She heard I was there. I don't know how the word got around. But she asked me prophetic advice. I said, no, you can't do that. Prophetics is given, not being advised. Either you receive it, you turn away from it. But you handle it when you turn away from it. I didn't realize that I'm blessing the new reformation of Ukraine map. And I thought I was just praying. So I, I always tell the Lord, these are the extensions of your hand, and I would wipe out. And I just pray, 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 and release blessings over Ukraine. And after I said, Amin, in, in Ukraine, she said, oh, I should be safe presenting this to the parliament and the president in two or three days. I said, what? So I said, hold up a second. I went again, <laughs> making sure I didn't forget any part of it. I said, Lord, you said whatever I touch prospers, and these are your hands. So I said, I even asked the chair just to reach over because it as you see, I'm the shortest everywhere I go. And you can't go in that building without encountering heavy uh, armed men. They ask for documents and everything, only limited access. And God, I said, Lord, you're here. You're here. Next, please. This is the magnet, uh, paper magnet of Ukraine, Jewish received Christ right there with his family. Same thing, they heard, they said, we want you, would you pray for our, our factory? And this is how the Lord had shown me that, you know, how Russia is oppressing Ukraine. Russia is supplying paper to Ukraine. I call those giant toilet papers. <laughs> but, he not only that, he, I mean, he, he received Christ right there and took all his family to the same prayer. Amazing. Next, please. That's a factory, by the way. I had a tour, so I, all I did is swipe up, like rub my, my oil. 
I said, Lord, you're here. It's done. And I pray that all and everything that's being signed on paper is guided by you, instructed by you, and even the notebooks for children, that everywhere they write, it's anointed. So next, please. The, as you see, those are the papers. Those are the books that they produce. Next, please. I was on television. <laughs> Same thing. I got invited and say, would you bless our television station? Again, this one is an orthodox. And that lady there on the right, I, I, I uh, knew her last year. She traveled from Kiev to Belotserka. And she said, I want the word. And it came true. The prophecy came to pass. So she said, I'll sneak you in. So we were like there sneaking in that morning. But the owner came. I didn't realize he's the owner. So I said, oh, Lord. I said, oh, hello. And he said, Previous. I said, Gila, like, how are you? And I said, who are you? Think, you know, um, I'm okay. And then I said, sir, I feel like I have to pray for you. And the interpreter was telling him, and he doesn't know I'm leading him to a prayer of salvation. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be sneaky out there. But next, please. See, we practice. I said, this is like my, my prophecy for myself that I'm proclaiming the gospel of Jesus in Ukraine. Um, next, please. The Lord not only um, led me to be sneaky with big people, but he put it in my heart to bless the body of water of Ukraine. And... This is the river of Nepropetrol. And that's a re small river in Herodisha. Next, please. That's how big the river is, like an ocean. I said, oh, you have beach here. They said, no, it's a river. I said, no, you're, it can't be a river. It's, it's a river. Next, please. And so the group earlier, when I found out it's Nepropetros, I took them and taught them how to prophesy, declare, decree. And I said, everybody that swims here will be saved. Everybody that, that's so desolate will be alive. Everything, and they, they were quick. And after, we poured oil, by the way. We anointed the water. And after we poured the oil, three, um, including the, the pastors and two members, gave me this green. I said, uh-oh. And then he said, did you realize that this goes to the Black Sea? When I heard that, I said, hold up a second. One more bottle, <laughs> you know. And more prayers went into the river. Because it touches anything, I said, any shore that touches this water will be owned by God, will be brought back to God. It's for his kingdom. Next, please. Oh, that one um, on the right, that's Chernobyl, closer to London. That's, that's huge. That's another river. They don't have beaches there, but they take the river as the ocean. I can't blame them. It's huge. Next, please. This is one of the prof uh, prophetic words I released last year when I, I um, did a service in, in that tent. I said, I felt like you're rising up. I said, next year I can see a temple of Solomon. That's the temple right now. Next, please. This is another signs and wonders going to um, Herodisha. Double nest. I look for 
everything to, to prove to them that God is speaking to them. And this is in, the church is in between these nestings. Amazing. That's the way to the village. Next, please. And you see the wheat, by the way, these are another signs. When I saw that purple heart being in the military, I said the purple heart doesn't only carry valor, but carries the glory of God. So I said, wow. And then it was cherries time. Multiplication, I said, is here. And then this house have no roof. I, I call that house open heavens ready for outpouring of heavens. Next, please. Not because I was getting hungry or being starved in, in Ukraine. When we got invited one weekend, this man hosted us up, and he's into ecology. I said, uh, dinner, huh? And I, I asked my interpreter, I said, Katya, what's that on the table? He said, I don't know. I said, ask him. It's grass. I said, are you serious? It's not for the, the goat or, or the cattle in the back? And the guy said, it's healthy for you. I said, I've never seen them before. So he said, that's for our dinner. So I, I told the Lord, I said, 911, Pa. <laughs> two things, only two things, nothing much tonight. Either you bless that food or you bless this belly. <laughs> it turned out it was so good. We mix it with mashed potato. By the way, Ukrainian, every day there's a uh, potato dish. I got tired. And I, I told them bluntly, I said, yeah, this is not kartoshka, meaning I'm tired of potato. And that's the tea still grass. And in the morning, he was so motivated, he made a yogurt out of goat's milk, fresh. I said, hmm. I said, you're my big bro. But the Lord had taught them creativity by these things. He, they don't realize that. I said, you've got to be thankful. You have these grasses, healthy. Little things that would remind them that there's a God in their life. Next, please. I got creative myself. The first month and a half I was there, it was rough. The weather, the water. Imagine taking a bath, freezing cold water. I have long hair then, so I fragmentalized my bath. Head first, and you, you, I feel my jaws lock in every morning because it's so cold. And um, I spend my own money. More so, I, uh, my interpreter became my responsibility because we go everywhere. So double portion of the expenses. And this is how the Lord shows that, hey, you this, you know, you're worth something here. And I was craving for fish because I don't eat meat. And I said, it would be nice to have salmon, pa, you know, been here for a while. And that afternoon, somebody cooked salmon for me. And I, I turned it into a salad and to show them because their salad is different. This is the creativity of America, I said. And then one day, somebody gave us 500 grivna. I said, yay, fruits! We made that. And this one was prepared for us. They're so, gra um, they're so full of gratitude when you do them something. Much more if you pray for them. They'll give you everything, including their homes, I guess. Next, please. Location, location, location. Those are the bathrooms. You can endure them sometimes, but you have to do what you have to do, and you have to do what you got to do. I almost had an accident on Herodishi. 
it's a different model. <laughs> it's not the squatting. It's elevated. And I was so used to squatting. And I was positioning my feet. I said, okay, I'm light. I said, it will, will it hold. When I put my second foot there, this went in. <laughs> I'm like, whoo! <laughs> good thing I have a, like, like a good reflex. I said, whoo! I was like, Lord, I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> but I survived. It's so amazing what you do in Ukraine. And the right one, when you're in there, they practice darts. <laughs> if they miss, I said, you're in trouble. So you have to do it quick. They have sense of humor there. Next, please. When I saw this, I said, this is the path for Ukraine. Path for Ukraine. Well, let me add more things that I was able to um, do. The Lord allowed me to go to a center where they say young girls and mothers that are about to commit um, abortion, beautiful, and they have a center there, and they have a, um, a website too. I just didn't have it. But it's so amazing to pray for babies because they're precious. And I was able to um, enter into a, a ministry of drug addicts recovering. And, and they're so far on, uh, for the Lord. And um, what else do I have? I'm forgetting. I go by my camera. Oh, um, I remember prophesying over Kiev last year. You shall grow and you shall expand. If you see Kiev now, it's so amazing. I'm prophesying for myself every day, for every tall building. I said, I have a flat there on a Monday. I have a flat there on a Wednesday. <laughs> I taught them. I, I show it to them. That way they can have that hope that the Lord answers prayers. And the, I'm so thankful that I'm able to teach two Catholic groups that are now Reformed Christians. And if you must hear their worship, you feel the Lord just right next to you, if not inside of you. Amazing, amazing faith they have and amazing love for God, and amazing hunger for God. And that's what takes my heart every year. As if you planted your seed, and you see it grow and grow until it bear its own fruit. And the Lord had shown me this season because the, the, the soil is so fertile in, 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 in Ukraine. Their, their cherries, the trees, they would pick up three times and still have more. That's multiplication. Their wheat are so thick, uh, thick and, and their sunflowers are so tall and corn. They call it kurusa, kurusa, I call it. But what the Lord had revealed to me in that is they're so full of seeds, they don't realize. Physical, yeah, they see it, but in the spirit, they don't feel it. And it's just through the teachings and, and guiding them through it. And they are quick learners, quick learners. And I'm, I'm just so blessed to be there again this, this year. Next, please. I can't, I can't um, make this any bigger. Those are the problems in Ukraine right now as far as healing is concerned. Some are like, um, 
Some are alco uh, alcoholism, addictions. Some are even fornication. Some are sexual addiction. Some are violent ones because of the root that they have. And I thank you, Shirley. I know you're not here. That it came so handy what I have learned right before I left deliverance. So many of them. And this is for Ukraine. Ti Ukraina, yachi berl blue. Minya sercha, ochin ochke chala. Prokidaisa, prokidaisa. Nispe, nispe. Malis, malis. Yachi berl blue. Thank you. Yeah, um, we're going to try to cut it short. It's almost time, right? But I wanted to I wanted to explain some things that are going on in Israel right now. That uh, it's it's you know if I if I say the word zealot, what comes to your mind? Probably it could be the the Pharisaical spirit when Jesus was alive, and some of the kind of very radical evil that it seemed like would come out. And yet now we're 2,000 years, and this last week, the same kind of pharisaical, ultra-Orthodox, one, um, one man ran into the gay parade and stabbed six people, uh, killed one lady. And then a few days later, they think they haven't caught them yet, but Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox Jews set fire to two Palestinian houses and one baby died, and the, the parents are in trouble. But, um, you know, we wouldn't, we certainly wouldn't justify, we wouldn't agree with the gay parade, but we would also not agree with that kind of violence. And, and the, so the question is, how, what do we do with that, you know, and I would, I'm, I'm going to share the scripture that the Lord really sums it all up, and it's in Ezekiel 36. And and in in Ezekiel 36, uh, starting with verse 17, he, the Lord says, "Son of man, when the house of Israel dwell in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways." and deeds. So, so I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the countries. I judged them according to the ways and their deeds. When they uh, came to the nations, wherever that they went, they profaned my holy name. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God. I do not do this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but I do for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which you have profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their minds, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord. When I am hallowed uh, in you before their eyes, for I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries where I have scattered you, and bring you into your own land. There I will spring clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from your, all your filthiness and from all your idols. And this is, a, this is the word of the Lord, and this is what we live through. When Jesus was here, he came, and 
uh, in many ways Israel profaned his name, and they're still doing that. But there's a promise. There's the promise that the Lord's going to bring them back and sprinkle clean water on them. And so the question is, how do we, as believers in Jesus, deal with this? And there's a number of scriptures that instruct what, how we should relate to this. And in first, um, uh, this is uh, Psalms uh, 18, verse 43. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve you. So here the Lord is talking to Israel that a people that they did not know will serve them. And that's us. And then again in uh, Isaiah 40, verse 1, it says, Comfort ye, comfort you, my people, says the, your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. So as we don't agree with what Israel does, but we comfort them, we pray for them, because they have suffered. I mean, if you can't study any history, of what they've went through throughout the ages. So as we're praying and comforting them, uh, we're preparing the way of the Lord. And, and then in Isaiah, uh, this is Isaiah 60, verse 10, the sons of foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. So again, the Lord's saying, the sons, us, the sons of the foreigners of Israel will build up their walls. And finally, in Isaiah 62, verse 6 and 7, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent and give him no rest until he establishes and until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And so that's our calling, all of us, at different degrees, is to uh, not agree with Israel when they do a lot of things that profane the Lord's name, but we're to love them, serve them, pray for them. And that's really what this tour is about. We're going to the borders. Israel has basically four borders the Lebanon border in the north, the Syrian border in the east, the Jordan border in the so southeast, and the Egyptian border in the south, and, w and the Mediterranean on the west, which could certainly get uh, uh, attacked. And so we're going to each of those borders, and we're going to proclaim the Lord's uh, promises about the borders, proclaim the Lord's protection, and build possibly altars and then other prophetic acts to, to make our statement and our proclamation that we are there to comfort Israel, to serve it, to pray for it, and to stand with them. And we believe by faith this is very significant. And when it's the Lord's timing, he'll, he'll gather all our Israel back and he'll sprinkle clean water on them. They'll all be saved. And the nations that separated their land and attacked them will be judged. And then the glorious end will come. We'll all be together in the eternal kingdom. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you for this. It's um, in many ways a hard message to understand, but your ways are far above our ways. So we thank you that we can participate, Lord, in our generation in your plan on the earth, and we give you praise. 
In Jesus' name, amen. And um, I guess we're dis dismissed. Huh? <laughs> Lord, bless everybody as they go. This midweek is sometimes a, the middle of uh, pressure, and so we ask for a blessing of peace to reign on everybody tonight and through the week and bring us all back for your glory. In your name, Jesus, amen. <laughs>